Okay. Bon, merci tout le monde. Je vais continuer en anglais parce que ma, ma français c'est plutôt limité. Uh, I am uh, Richard Gutano, CEO of uh, Stratum, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about enabling transparent partnerships and what does that mean. Uh, just a quick overview, um, there's been some great talks about smart contracts and what can be done from that respect, uh, but for this presentation we're going to talk a little bit about some other features that the, the blockchain enables. Specifically we'll talk about proof of existence, uh, we'll talk about signing, states of the workflow, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Chainscript, a specification that we're working on that enables a developer to describe a, a business process or work, workflow. Uh, so in today's world, if you can imagine uh, a business process, you might have multiple business partners working together. For example, you might have a manufacturer, a retailer, payment service provider, delivery service, and uh, ultimately a customer. And uh, in today's world, this, this process is quite, quite complex. I mean, we have, we have each partner who has private data that they, they maintain, and then they build APIs to connect this data between each other, and uh, we still end up with a fundamental problem, which is I don't trust your data and you don't trust my data. And so we have to introduce third party regulators, auditors, uh, counterparties, etc., to help keep this process honest. And so some of the fundamental problems that we also have is like this uh, idea of asymmetric information. I have information that you may not know about or you may not trust. We have complexities involving synchronizing the data between the partners. And ultimately, this leads to this type of defensive partnership, where, where, or paradigm, I should say, where um, we're not so open with each other. And what we're trying to do with blockchain is try to open this up so that partnerships are more transparent, uh, traceability is uh, built into the process, and, uh, and things can be, we can have confidence in the data. And so, uh, to talk a little bit about the blockchain, I like to dissect the blockchain and do some anatomy work on this. And so, at, at Stratum, we talk about blockchain in terms of three primary elements. Uh, the first one is the blockchain data structure, and as you can see, it's, a, it's just a chain of blocks that can fork. And uh, this has been around for a long time, maybe 25 years, uh, but it's how this comes together that makes it really revolutionary. So the second thing we can, we can talk about is transactions, and so transactions are placed into these blocks. And uh, we can do things like ledger entries, like send Bitcoin from person A to B. Or we can do uh, smart contracts like Ethereum and other types of, of uh, transactional layers on top. But in this case, we're going to talk about hashes. And so hashes are fingerprints of data. So we can take a document or any type of media and take a fingerprint or a hash and insert this into, a, into the blockchain. And finally, we're, we're, we'll talk about the consensus uh, mechanisms that, that, that protect the blockchain and the transactions. And in Bitcoin, we talk about proof of work and proof of stake and all these other types of mechanisms, or we talk about permission and private mechanisms as well. So with this in mind, with this in mind, we can kind of start to discern and how to look at blockchain and how to implement it for the various use cases. And so proof of existence is one use case where we take the blockchain on the left, we create a timestamp to a hash, and with these three pieces of information, which is the, the transaction, the blockchain, the timestamp and the, the hash of the data, we can prove the existence of this data in time. And, uh, and to do this, normally we would have to take, uh, in Bitcoin, we take a transaction, we pay a transaction fee, and we insert a hash. And if we were to do this for a million documents, we would have to pay a million transaction fees. And so what we've done at Stratum is we built a, uh, an engine on top of this, which allows us to take a very large number of hashes and represent it with one Bitcoin transaction. So we're, we're able to pay the Bitcoin fees and take care of all that business, and we just provide this service as a, as a platform, as a service for our clients. And so w one of the primary mechanisms we use is what's called a Merkle tree. And so if you can imagine this Merkle tree on the very bottom, L1, L2, L3, L4, this would be your data. This would be the client data that's private. The data is not stored on the blockchain only the hashes. And so we take a hash of L1, which would be, let's say, the data that we're talking about, and we would hash that and hash it with its neighbor, and we would build this tree with a path. And so the path between L1 and the top hash is something that we can reliably use to, to um, store a large number of hashes into a, one transaction. And so what we return is what's called, what we call objective evidence. And this is just a simple JSON uh, kind of 
receipt that can prove the existence of your data in time. And so the way that this works is the top link hash is a hash of your data. And then we have the Merkle path, which is the path through the tree that I just showed. And then finally we end up with a, a, a transaction on the Bitcoin. In this case right here, it's the test net. And so this Bitcoin transaction here, we can look this up and we can find the hash that corresponds to this Merkle tree. And so with this data, uh, other partners can independently verify the existence of your data. There is no reliance on Stratum or on the actual partner. This is open and this, is a, this can be proven in time for as long as the Bitcoin network or the Ethereum network or the internet exists. And notice down here we can have different blockchains. It doesn't necessarily have to be Bitcoin. It could be Ethereum or it could be some permission blockchain, depending on the requirements for your business. And so second, on top of this um, proof of existence engine, we're developing a specification called ChainScript. And ChainScript is a Java, <clears throat> JavaScript implementation that allows a developer to describe a workflow, a business process, in each state in that process. And each state corresponds to a state transition. So if we have a state and you have the next step of the process, you would execute it through a transition. And that transition <clears throat> automatically gets objective evidence. So your entire workflow, your entire business process is supported by ChainScript, described by ChainScript, but it's also supported by the proof of existence engine underneath it. And so it kind of looks like this. Uh, this is a little technical, but uh, basically we have two links and the link represents the state and the process. And the state here is uh, abbreviated. I've, I've excluded the data to keep it simple. But um, what's important to show is that you have a link hash, and so the link hash corresponds to your data and state. And then the second link uh, refers to the previous hash. So you can see previous link hash refers to the previous one. And so what this allows us to do is describe the workflow, each state of the workflow, and then link each state to the previous state so that you cannot cut the, the process. So if you were to have an entire business process and you want to validate this with your business partner, you can share this chain script with a partner and the partner can be assured that this process has been properly uh, described. The third aspect of this is uh, what we call <clears throat> digital signatures, which is a, it's been around for 25 years or plus or more. But the idea is we, want, we need to be able to secure the human to machine interaction points. And this could be important and I'll mention some use cases here shortly. But um, you know, depending on your process, you may need to provide proof of the state transition. And so with various devices, and Ledger happens to be one of our investors, so I, I mentioned Ledger here, but they're, they're developing different types of uh, devices that can be used and programmed to secure these states. And so uh, I just wanna talk a little bit about what we're doing at Stratum uh, and the industries that we're working with currently. Um, with this uh, workflow, smart workflows in mind, uh, we're <clears throat> working with different banks to do KYC and compliance. And uh, it happens to be we can actually provide better, uh, better compliance reporting and auditing to the, to the regulators using something like this. And so we're exploring how this might, might pan out in, in reality. Uh, document consent. Uh, one interesting use case is uh, with pharmaceutical research. And uh, if you can imagine a clinical trial protocol, uh, you have a pharmaceutical company who would like to test a new drug and this involves signing up new patients and the process of taking the doses and recording symptoms, etc. And so with this, with ChainScript and, and smart workflows, we can actually secure the entire clinical trial process and be able to share that data. So you have the data plus the proof and be able to share that with scientists and doctors and other types of other labs involved. And uh, we're also talking with some lawyers about securing legal processes. <coughs> And of course, ultimately, we want to help improve the auditing and traceability aspects of the workflow. And uh, so our, our offering, what Stratum offers, is a tool set that developers can use to plug these, these, these types of features into their existing information systems. So we like, to, we like to keep it as easy as implementing an email service. You know, it's something that the developer can easily implement and work with. And uh, we're trying to really focus on the developer experience to make it that easy as well. Um, so yeah, so if you're interested in a demo, if you'd like to talk a little bit more, uh, please visit stratum with an M dot com and uh, sign up for a quick demo. We'll be happy to share with you some more. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Merci, Richard. J'en profite pour rappeler la société Covea. Je l'ai perdu de vue. Michel, si tu peux te rapprocher de la régie, s'il te plaît.
Merci. Bien, Richard, je te remercie beaucoup. Est-ce que vous avez des questions sur Stratum, sur ses solutions, sur sa philosophie, sur ses offres Bien évidemment, vous aurez également de l'info en ligne. Um, will you plan to extend also the, the, the proof of existence for real objects I mean with the specific labels for instance a bottle of wine or diamonds or things like that so the question is, is how would we represent a physical property in a blockchain yeah. right um, so we call that a ledger asset which is a little bit different than a digital asset. So a digital asset such as Bitcoin um, exists independently of a bank, corporation, um, government, etc. And it exists because of its consensus model and all the underlying uh, mechanisms that make that work. However, a ledger asset is a bit different, right? Um, a ledger asset represents a property, so my iPhone or my vehicle. And um, when we look at that, we think, well, We can't, we, can't really, we can't really put the item on the blockchain, so we have to have a bearer token, something to represent that. And that can be easily implemented with, um, with blockchains or with some type of digital signature. However, it gets more complex when you're... What's, what's important about a ledger asset is you need to be able to issue it and you need to be able to transfer it. And so ultimately you have to bring that ledger asset back into the real world somehow. Um, so. I guess the question would be, um, what can we do with that here with digital signatures? I think you would have to have the entire blockchain mechanism to secure it. It wouldn't be something that you can simply do with, with a digital signature. Et je vois une autre question ici. Il y avait d'autres questions, sinon une autre là-bas, oui. Hello. Uh, um, so, so if I understood correctly, you're storing the only the Merkle root on the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain or whatever one. So how do you store securely the rest of the, the data? And second question, uh, in the chain script, how to do, what queries, ca querying capability do you give in order to navigate through those data? Okay, that's, that's a good question. So we do not store client data. We, 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 we only return evidence, objective evidence back to, to you. Um, so the data is actually stored on your servers and it's maintained by, by your developers. Uh, what we do store is we do store the, the chain script um, which represents your business process. Okay, and then we offer an API that allows you to traverse and search and to tag the entire process. And so you can create new instances of a business process very quickly and the object graph that represents it. Une autre question uh, By using your API, how long does it take to create a new contract? Please, how long does it take to create a new contract using your API? How Is the question it... how long does it take? Yes. To, to create a new contract? A new contract using your API. Okay, in this, in this offering here, we don't actually create contracts. We describe workflows, uh, and to create a workflow, it, you, I mean, to actually like program a new workflow into the system? I'm not, I guess I'm not sure I understand the question. If I use your API, how long yeah. does it take to create a, a contract, if I use? Okay, for a developer to implement yes, for this? for a developer. For a developer, okay. Yeah, um, literally a few hours or less. It's pretty simple. It's, um, Like I mentioned, we, we focus a lot on developer experience, so we build tools and, 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 and systems that are very common. We use JavaScript, Node.js, and things like that. Um, so to create a new, a new oh, well, I shouldn't get too technical at this point, but to create a new uh, workflow in, in Stratum, it's simply just uh, installing some tools and running uh, some command line prompt tools. So within a few hours, you should be able to up and running. So. Est-ce que vous avez d'autres questions Non, je crois pas. Si uh, Sorry, concerning, if you implement your API, API, API uh, can you take on board historical workflows or do you start when you implement your 
API with the workflows as of implementation? Or do you take on board historical workflows? So the question is, is if you have an existing workflow yes. and you have an existing information yes. system. Do you integrate that or not? Yeah, so, so you can plug this in in different ways. If you have an existing workflow, if it's just existing process, you can just overlay this on top of the system. Okay. Yeah. You can get into backdated that is already existing and put it into your proof. Right. What, what, where the data is, where the objective evidence is created is during the state transitions. Okay. Well, so what you do, you, you would program the logic. You would write the logic in JavaScript and program the logic for each state transition and that gets uploaded into, into the Stratum Cloud. And then uh, you would just simply, you or your business partners would simply make API calls to this agent and it would initiate the state transitions which automatically get the ob objective evidence. It's a bit technical, but uh, yeah. we could thank we would you. be happy to do a demo to kind of thank illustrate you. it better. So, thank you. Other questions? No? Oui? La dernière. Um, I don't really understand how you get back, how do you use the evidence? Uh, could, could you give an example of how you would use the evidence? How you would use the evidence? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So, so this is the evidence that is returned from Stratum. And um, what we've actually done is, um, one of our proof of concepts, we have PDF files, okay? And so you would upload a PDF, invite people to sign the PDF, and each step of this process is recorded in ChainScript. Finally, what we do is we take that and we insert it into the PDF. So you have the PDF, which is your data, and then you have this information, which is inserted into the PDF. So with the two, you have data and you have evidence, kind of like a, a, a certification of this, of this data. Now when you share that, the receiving party can take this data and, well, by your eye, you can actually do it, uh, follow the path through and validate the blockchain transaction to make sure that the, match, the hashes all match. Or you can run a, a script, some JavaScript, to do it automatically. Um, so that's one, one way we're able to do it. Um, you can also, um, yeah, I think automation would be the key point. We provide toolkits that you can install on your servers to do this automatically. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I want to make sure I understand your question. Like, yeah, the PDF. Yeah, I mean, we can. I could demonstrate how this would work. Um, if you have time later on, something. So. Okay, thank you. Bien, vous aurez l'occasion d'échanger à la pause, mais la pause c'est pas maintenant parce qu'on a un peu de retard. Merci Richard. Merci pour ta présentation. Là, vous pouvez l'applaudir maintenant.